I got a list of things I swore I would never do. I swore I would never put in a swimming pool. And you know what I did? I put in a swimming pool. Now, here's the thing. Some of that was absurdly carefully calculated and a little bit of it was blind luck. And the blind luck part that got me over the hump, because honestly, even after I did it, I was like, I don't know what we just did. I can't believe we did that. What got me over the hump was COVID-19. We put in our pool. It was finished August of 2019. So we were just starting to use it late summer 19, early 20, the world went nuts and no one could leave their house and no one was allowed to talk to people or have friends or socialize in any physical environment and we swam and we swam and we swam and we hot tubbed and we swam and it was like i was so glad we had a swimming pool and we have the property type and this is part of the calculus of like why did we do it when i've been telling radio listeners and friends and clients and neighbors for 20 years don't put in a pool buy a house, let someone else put in the pool, buy one that already has a pool because the math still is like really hard to line up. Now a pool's like 80,000 plus, used to be like 30,000 plus. And I would just say, look, if you have a $400,000 house and you put in a $50,000 pool, you do not have a 450,000. It's just not the way it works. I have no delusions that I'm going to get every dollar back that I put into that pool. That was a lifestyle investment. That was about fun with my wife and kids and friends and neighbors and baseball teams and cheerleading squad, like come over and do the party here. We want to love on our friends and neighbors. That was not about if I spend a dollar, can I get a dollar 50 back? I swore I would never put in a pool. We did. And we've been really, really happy with our decision. Has my advice changed for our friends and listeners on put in a pool? Not really. I know that sounds like I'm special and I can break my own rules, but if you have a unique property type where you're deeply invested in outdoor living, the idea that the, the next person that buys this house is going to buy it as much for the outside as the inside, then I would say, yes, the rules don't apply quite as aggressively to you because your next buyer might actually value this stuff a little bit more. Still way better financially if the previous owner did that and you're just buying what they did because you're not going to pay full value for what they put in. And now you're good. Now, when you go sell it, what you sell for will be relative to what you paid for it. The difference is I have a massive expense in the ground that my buyer is probably not going to pay for. Here's one more thing I swore I would never do. And I did. I've said over the years, I will never do that. Lots of time. One of the ones I felt maybe most certain about, I'll never put in a swimming pool was up there, but I said, I will never build a house. And what I meant by that is like, I will never deal with the process of building a home. And I definitely meant I'll never deal with a custom home, right? I didn't even think I would ever work with like a, a production builder who builds thousands of homes a year because I didn't want to deal with like, you know, which doorknobs and which cabinet hardware you want. Now to some people that sounds great, but most people, and I hesitate to say this, but it's true. Most people that have been through that process are like, oh my gosh, I'll never. They might say, I'm glad I did it, but I never want to do that again. And a lot of people would say, I, I will never do that again. It was a nightmare. Our process has been excellent, but I swore I would never do it. I told people, I don't know. I'll never build a house. I like old houses. I like remodeling old houses. I've remodeled dozens and dozens and dozens of old houses. Hundreds, if you include all the clients we've helped, maybe thousands. And I still love old houses. Here's the thing. To save for years and years and years, to live beneath our means for our homes for all of our adult life, to have been smaller and more modest, which by the way, we've loved, has allowed for us to build what is truly our dream home right now. As a Christ follower, I'm twisted all up in my head and my heart on if there's, if there's wisdom in this, but we have sought wise counsel. We have prayed through it. We have thought through it. We have saved. We've been as careful as we can, and we're really excited to build the home that we're building and to share it with our friends, our families, the ministries we love. I pray daily that this house would be help our ministry to friends, family, and neighbors that we don't need, and we don't need any, we don't even need what we currently have. We don't need this house. We don't need the land we have, but I think we're, I think we're supposed to steward it in a way that when people are in our home, they feel safe, they feel comfortable, they feel loved, they feel encouraged, they feel invested in. And because of those things, I'm really loving this home building process.